Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Last Claudia. That's right, we're here again to talk about a new banner, and after that I'm going to give my overall thoughts of the collapse so far. So let's go ahead and get started with the new unit. Meet Angela, one of the mages of this particular collab, and uh, from what I can tell she seems really, really cool, and I like her little design, it's pretty nice. Uh, looking at her stats, you can kind of tell that she's going to be a mage. She's got 1545 on the intelligence. Uh, and then she's got 1065 mind too, which makes you think she's a healer or something. But she's more about that offensive magic. Uh, decent stats overall. I do like how she does have a resistance to silence. Uh, she's also nil to stun, which is a big convenience. Uh, and then, of course, her attribute resistance are kind of evened out. For the most part but decent resistances she has three different positive resistances fire uh, wind and dark so that's good to see now as far as skills are concerned uh, for me it's nothing really worth going too hardcore well I'd say the special is really the only thing worth mentioning uh, basically it's a powerful attack on all enemies a high chance to make enemies faint uh, excluding bosses. So she has a cool little special, uh, mainly because she can make the enemies fake. Why not? As far as the traits, we have Spellbinder. So become Spellbinder class, staff equipped, magic attack damage plus 30%, damage cap 3000. So you're getting a boost in your offense on both the damage boost and damage cap um, boost. So that's pretty cool. I like it so far. Uh, we also have Alternus Magician, probably saying it wrong, but whatever. Uh, when hitting an attribute weakness with a magical attack, damage plus 40%. Uh, and then mana attack magic effective against bosses. That's pretty cool. Uses 3% of max MP for 100% more damage. So that's pretty cool too. I like that overall. So this is a rainbow mage, just to kind of let you know. So she's going to be able to hit most of the elements so as far as hitting a weak attribute that should be very easy for her which is why this is really good so most of the time with with one minor exception even with the exception you can still get around it but pretty much all of the time you're going to be able to get plus 40 percent damage so nothing wrong with that uh mana attack magic Effective against bosses. Uh, basically, all of her magic is mana magic. So, she's going to be good against bosses in general. She's just going to be dealing more and more damage. It's almost like a slayer kind of a thing, but for magic. She has a boss slayer. For, or, I, I guess you can call it a boss geyser, is what this trait is. And then, of course, being able to use some of your MP to make your offense stronger. We've seen something similar before. And it's just nice that she has it. So she just has a lot of damage boosters in this particular trait. So not bad. All right, so let's take a look at some magic and skills. So we have Explorer. Now we've seen this before. Uh, fire attack, basically. Uh, we have Blaze Wall, which is uh, another fire attack, but with a damage cap of 2,000. So that's kind of the difference here. You pay more MP for 2,000 damage cap. Uh, we have Spike Freeze, which is an ice attack. Uh, Stun Gust, which is a wind attack that can has a chance to put silence on the enemy. We have Thunderstorm, which is a thunder-based attack. You have Evil Gate, which is a dark attack. Keep in mind, these are all mana magic, as, or they all actually say it on here. And then they have Dark Force, which is another... Uh, dark attack. This is just a stronger version of it. No special effects, just a stronger version. And then you have Ancient Curse, which is uh, the one that people are excited about the most. It's a powerful no attribute attack on all enemies. So yes, we have a neutral magic damage dealer. Uh, our second one to be able to do uh, no attribute magic, which is really cool to see. The only other character we have that does this is Lagerbos. Now, Thanks to people on my friend list who actually have Angela, I've been able to test out this particular magic, and I like it a lot more than Apocalypse, mainly because it's just faster. You know, you, you cast it, boom, it comes out, it hits fast. So, personally, I like it better than Apocalypse, mainly because of its speed. 
Uh, and of course, mana magic is always better than the normal magic you would get in this game, so I'm not surprised. So I like it a lot. Moving along to skills, we have MP up max, which she needs, arcane up three and five, really good. Dragon Geyser, so another magical slayer. We have special boost. Uh, we have auto aura. Wisdom is protection. Auto protection, auto crit, auto advanced circles, auto recast. So as you can tell right here, the fact that she has auto recast and auto advanced circles basically tells you that she basically has the mage package. Those are the two more important things. The only thing that's not that I haven't mentioned yet is high level magic chat, but those are the main three you want to see on a mage. Uh, moving along, so we have auto heal, which is actually really good too. No attribute attack raise two. No attribute critical raise. So the only thing you're missing here is just the regular uh, no attack raise, which or no attribute attack raise uh, one, which can easily be learned by certain arcs. Uh, you have pose of victory. We have high level magic chant. There it is. We have enigma. This seems new, less likely to be targeted by enemies. So this is similar to, uh, I think it's illusion. So I'm assuming that illusion would stack with this. So that's kind of cool. Want to keep her from getting hit. Uh, we have staff high boost, staff mega boost. So a little bit of damage cap there. We have decoy, magic aura, uh, wound magic. I want to say, I don't think it's wound. I, might, I think it might be wound. But anyway, when casting attack magic, use 5% of max HP for damage plus 20%. Damage cap plus 2,000. Spellbinder class damage effect plus 50%. Damage cap 5,000. So, uh, again, we're just upping the amount of damage that she can do as far as power and damage cap. And then the final skill is Limit Break. So, no attribute magic attacks have a chance of dealing critical damage. Magic attack damage cap plus 2,000. Mag Magus class 5,000 instead. Spellbinder class 8,000 instead. So, again, we're increasing that damage cap. Now this is specifically for neutral magic or no attribute magic, but most of the time this is what you're gonna wanna cast anyway, so that's perfectly fine. If you really wanna get more damage out of your elemental ones, you could always just throw in like a boost or a high boost or even an attack raise or whatever element you need to switch off and on as you need to. But overall, I like it. I believe that she has all of the mage passives that are important. Because uh, you really don't need Goddess Kiss for her. And, you know, I think that the fact that you have auto advanced circles is just good enough to get you through a quick fight. So, overall, really, really good. I still feel weird about the fact that they have they give these mages special boosts. And what's sad is that these geysers, it looks like they shouldn't stack with special boosts. And that's my understanding. But the fact that they keep adding special boosts makes me think that they do. But... I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm not a data miner, so I don't know what the facts really are. I don't really spend a lot of time testing, well, those specific kind of details. Uh, but overall, this character looks like a lot of fun. Like, literally a lot of fun. Like, if I were to pull her, I would use her just because, you know, I'd love to see some no attribute magic. Because I don't have Lagrabos either. So, this if I were to pull Angela, she would literally be my first. And just the fact that she's just a good all-around rainbow mage is just really, really cool. She deals really good damage. Got a nice look. This is an all-around awesome character that I hope to get one day. We'll see if I'm lucky in the future. But yeah, I think that she's definitely going to be someone you want to use against bosses. And honestly, just to clear content in general. I mean, the only place you probably won't use her in all actuality is, is Arena, which, you know, who cares, right? I mean, this is more of a PvE kind of game, so you really don't have to put a lot of emphasis on PvP. So, you know, the, the important thing is, can she do the PvE content? Absolutely. Bosses, multiple waves, she can do it all. She's great in my book, 100%. And I so hope I get her one day. But we'll see if I'm lucky or not one day. And of course, we cannot forget the LR arc attached to this particular banner. We have, looks like, uh, Flammy and Vuskov. So, let's take a look at the trait. I like the artwork too, but let's keep going. Uh, each time mana magic is used, all magical attacks deal progressively more damage. Max of 35%. Resets each wave. HP and MP plus 10%. When magically attacking, chance for enemy mine minus 30% and deal damage. 
So this is sort of a, a piercing arc for magic. You're lowering their mind, which means your ideal will deal more damage. Like the best way to deal damage with the mage is to one, lower their mind, and two, lower their attribute resistance. And that's how you can really do damage with mages. Uh, so I think this is really good. I like the trade already. Now the skills that you can learn from this arc, HP up two, MP up two, Soul Hunt, now this is a new one. Uh, when ally is incapacitated, apply a magic attack damage plus 30% buff to the unit. Wow, okay. That's interesting. We have auto barrier. We have elemental combo. So magic attack damage plus 5% for each repeat of an attack magic attribute. Max of 20%. Effect resets after 10 seconds slash when using a different attribute, attack magic or support healing magic. So basically as long as you're constantly casting the same element, you should be able to get stacks upon stacks upon stacks. Uh, you lose it when you literally stop casting that same element for longer than 10 seconds, or you cast something different, whether it's another element, or if you're just healing in general. Uh, you know, anything outside of the element that you're doing is going to reset it. So I think this is pretty good. We actually have something similar already that... Uh, I think it costs five. I might be wrong, but it's something that does something similar, except it doesn't have a lot of these conditions, so you can just keep going and going. Uh, but I still think this is good, and if your mage just needs a little bit more of a push, uh, especially in those long boss fights, for example, I think elemental combo will really do you some good. And the last skill is it's basically fast high protection, which is actually pretty decent. I would say this is probably a PvP kind of a skill that you want to use to just keep yourself alive in the beginning when you have to fight through a bunch of, you know, Roy and Luxeus S3s. And honestly, there are other characters that are now on the fray too, because honestly, those two characters haven't been as devastating as they once were. I've been able to beat a lot of those teams now, but uh, this will help you stay alive if you're not, if you're having a hard time dealing with the initial onslaught. So overall, oh yeah, we got one more thing to look at. I'm sorry. The Queen's Scepter. This is the... This is the big, big deal right here as far as art is concerned. I mean, the arc is already good, but this is kind of the cherry on top. So, the Queen Scepter does the following. String 22 and 222 and mine of 83. Magic attack damage plus 10%. When using attack magic, if damage is reduced by attribute resistance, reduce resistance by 20% and deal damage. This is a fantastic weapon right here. I'll put it to you this way. If I were lucky enough to pull the arc, I would 100% use my Ethereum to get this. That's how good this is. The, the, anytime that you have a weapon on a mage that can naturally reduce 20% of attribute resistance, you want that 100%. This is actually one of the best stabs I've seen in any arc that we've ever had. Now we've had some really good staffs in the game, believe it or not, there's actually a lot of good staffs and this is really, really high up there as one of the top tier in my opinion. I think this is a great weapon and definitely worth using Ethereum. And I don't say that about a lot of arcs. A lot of the items I'm like, yeah, they seems pretty good. But this specifically, I think is pretty much a must for, you know, any kind of mage really. This is just too good. So yeah, I 100% approve of this particular item. So yeah, overall, I think this is a great arc. I think this is a lot better than the other arc that we got on the first part of the collab. This one just has the whole package. It has a good arc trait. It actually has some interesting skills you can learn and the either reward is just fantastic. There is nothing bad at this. This is to me a top tier arc, 100% top tier. Don't care what anyone else says. That's just what it is. But yeah, I think this is definitely, this and Angela to me is worth chasing. I like both. I like, this is just one of the best banners I've seen in a while. So yeah, really, really cool. And of course, we have to talk about some of the paid gear. So let's take a look at yet another staff. Now this is specifically for Angela. Now this is a 25 strength with 222 intelligence. Magic attack damage cap 2000. Magic attack damage plus 15%. MP plus 15%. So you're getting 2000 damage cap, 15% to your magic attack, and plus 
of your, you know, base MP. Overall, this is pretty good. It's just more or less a statted item. I think it's good. Uh, personally, though, as much as I do like this, I think the arc ether reward from the arc that we just discussed would be a lot better than this. I mean, yeah, you're missing on a little bit of damage cap, but, you know, in all honesty, I just think that uh, you're going to be able to deal more on top damage in general by being able to penetrate uh, some weaknesses and help enable the, your other uh, partners that are on your team. Again, this isn't saying that this is bad. It's just the problem is, is that the, there's an arc that I feel would be better. So, you know, we'll see what the other item is to see if it's worth paying for this. So <clears throat> we have the Devil Dress. So this is Intelligence 151, which is interesting for a robe. Uh, defense plus 65. Physical and magic attack. Ma I'm sorry, physical and magic. Yeah, damage taken minus 10%. Casting not interrupted by most attacks, MP plus 15%. With the resistance to silence, which would put you at nil, and plus 20 resistance to light, which would give you a fourth element that she'll actually be uh, stronger in. So this, actually, I like a little bit better, I think. Let me go take a look at the weapon. I don't know if there was any... Okay, there was nothing extra special. Okay. So, if you're on a budget and you just want to get one of these two particular items... I'm kind of digging the robe, I'm not going to lie. And, and honestly, the arc that comes with the character is part of the reason, because I just think that that's just a better uh, weapon in general. But the robe is just giving you a lot. I mean, one, you're still getting an intelligence boost, so you're dealing more magic damage, right? Uh, you're getting more damage mitigation by both physical and magic by 10% without having to like add any skills to do that. So you're getting some defense naturally not basically having um a movable object on a road is a good thing too and you're still getting plus 15 percent mp you know what i mean i mean honestly this road is a total package in my opinion so if i was to choose between the, the dress and the staff i would 100 percent go for the dress i think that this is just better in general and i don't do a wheel mages ever so you know that's not even a factor but yeah i would definitely 100 percent say go for uh, this particular robe if you're going to pick one or the other. All right, so this is the part where I want to kind of talk about my thoughts on the collab as a whole. And I'm going to be including a little bit of the Secret of Mana part since they did add this as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I will say first is it was nice to visit this again. Uh, for those who don't know, this is our third time being able to actually play these levels. And it was nice to, to go back to the past for a little bit to enjoy, honestly, one of my favorite collab events ever. Uh, one of the things that made this really cool is that we had a boss gauntlet where you get to fight three different bosses. And I thought that was just, you know, really, really cool to fight those bosses, grind for some of the materials and... It was pretty cool. And in here, you basically got a repeat of that. Now, they didn't do anything special with this. This was more just a rehash to redo, you know, a redux, whatever. So, you know, and you got the same, you know, trading space, same mission rewards. Again, nothing super crazy. I mean, I think you did get some unit souls or I'm sorry, unit prisms. That's probably the most important thing to get out of this. So I was able to get prisms for basically all three characters since I was fortunate enough to get all three of them, which is I'm super hype about. But yeah, they did a good job with the Redux, but let's talk about the main thing here, which is the newer version, the Trials of Mana. So overall, the event met expectations. So my expectations for this wasn't super high. Well, to a degree, I expected the music from the games. I expected to see, you know, background of the levels to be similar to the game. And I expected to at least see a boss from that original game. And Last Claudia delivered. So we were able to get a lot of the music, some really nice music. I'm actually enjoying the sound that we're getting overall. And, you know, we got to see, you know, one of the big bosses when you're doing, you know, the, uh, I think it's the... 
to protect the world. So that particular boss in there, we got to fight. You know, so it was kind of cool. I mean, I dig that. And <clears throat> so it was what I expected. Uh, as far as like the magic pot thing, this is just a way for you to get, you know, some your soul slash prism. Uh, you could uh, get mega clusters as well. So don't forget to, you know, open these. Uh, so, you know, there was some good, good, interesting stuff. Uh, you had a bonus challenge that you can do every day to basically pick a unit to get a lot of experience, uh, get a lot of uh, unit souls of whatever character you're trying to level up. So good, they did okay there. And then you did get a high difficulty challenge, which I've only did it once. I actually used, you know, some of the mana folks and obviously had, you know, a death. You know, because it was I wasn't expecting <laughs> the this black rab rabbit to be uh, as difficult as it was for just using mana characters, uh, but it was it was a good fight. You know what I mean? That it was fun. You know, and it's not super difficult, right? I mean, if if you were to use like a you know your big boss team, you could probably you know deal with it pretty well and possibly not have a death. But I wanted to have a little bit of fun, so I was using you know uh, Reese and uh, I think Prem and. I think I used Randy as well. Uh, and then I had like a, a healer uh, as far as the friend unit or something like that. I don't remember. But either way, uh, it was a fun fight. So overall, this was okay, right? I think it was pretty good. It did what I expected it to do. Uh, the only complaints that I have were just nitpicky, right? For example, uh, in the original mana collab that we got, we had the opportunity to go to the world map and we were able to listen to one of the tracks of the Secret of Mana game on the world map. I believe on the second round of the uh, trial of the, of the Mana collab, they took that away. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they took that away. So you have to listen to just the regular world map music. And in here, they also took that away. So you don't get to hear that again. Again, that's just me being nitpicky. That's not, that doesn't really make or break the collab. Like I said, they did hit all the checkpoints they needed to. So I really don't have any legit complaints. This is more just me saying, okay, here are like a minor thing that I would have liked to have seen them add. But again, overall, I think they did a decent job. Now, the only thing that we are missing that we don't quite have as part of this collab yet is the time trial. I don't know if that's really worth bringing up as far as is it good or bad. I mean, having a time trial is always fun. So the fact that they're going to do it, I think is pretty cool. Uh, and my understanding is they're, they're gonna lower the difficulty a little bit because on the last time trial we had, it was, you know, very difficult. Uh, even for me, I was having a hard time too with it. So what they, but what the, what Last Claudio wants to do is they want to be able to have everyone participate. They don't want to just cater to, you know, the top 5% of the player base. They want everyone to be able to actually play and actually complete and compete. So that's why they're going to lower the difficulty, just so they can have engagement with more players. Because I actually have a friend who plays this who basically told me on the last time trial, you know, that it's not even worth it, you know, between the prizes and the difficulty. So... Uh, and I think that I've heard from others that supposedly they're going to make this time trial easier. Uh, so we'll see what that is. I don't know if I'm going to talk about it or not too much, but I wanted to bring it up because it is at least nice that for this call up, we are getting a time trial. As far as what bosses to expect, I mean, obviously we're going to be fighting the, the boss that came from the level 40 thing here on Hard to Protect the World. I'm like 100% certain that's going to be one of the fights we'll have to deal with. Uh, another guess, and I might be wrong, but they might even throw in the Black Rabbi as another boss. Like, if they up uh, the difficulty of that particular fight, that might prove to be pretty interesting. And then as far as, like, the third boss, that's the tricky one. Like, I don't know if they're gonna, like, do the boss from the original Secret of Mana and throw that in there as the third boss. I have no idea. I guess we'll find out, or they'll just probably throw in one of the bosses that we have naturally in Last Claudia. I mean, that's, you know, something that I would probably expect more. Uh, but hopefully it'll be fun. Hopefully everybody will be able to participate and get something out of it. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, overall, I'm content with the collab. I have 
They didn't. I don't think they exceeded expectations, but I think they just met expectations. They did what they're supposed to do, and I'm happy with that. I, I'm not going to ask for too much more, except please give, give me a ticket that'll give me Angela and the Ark. That's all I want. <laughs> but that's going to be it for today's episode. I appreciate you guys taking the time to hear me talk for however long it's been. Uh, but until the next banner comes out, you keep gaming. Take care, everyone. Later.